Hello, fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to your horoscope for the week of April 12, 2020. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. Well, it is this week that the energy of Aries is especially activated now, not only because of the sun and the important connections that the sun will be making with other power players in the sky, but at the end of the week, Mercury as well, newly in the sign of Aries, will be connecting with Venus. Venus, of course, now in shadow. So there's this variety of an emotional experience that is taking place. And the reason that I see it as emotional is because the energy of Aries is so immediate. It is an energy of adrenaline and what you feel, what riles you up, what excites you. It's an energy with a certain immediacy to it. And it is going to be a week like this where a lot of people are going to be wanting and truly yearning for, even demanding change and something to change in a meaningful way. Now, there are all kinds of ways in which change can happen, of course. There is that sense of the personal, wanting to live more true to an inner prompt, wanting to go your own way, be more independent, and finding an inner reserve, an inner determination to make that happen is going to be part of the journey for a lot of people out there. But of course, as we know, with everything happening in the world right now, there may very well be individual desires that are expressed in strong ways, as Aries Energies likes to do. That very desire for greater independence, for greater autonomy. There are a few ways I see the energy playing out this week. In the middle of the week, we have energy of tension. And this suggests frustration and over optimism. There's a lot of hope, but there's also going over the top. But as we get later into the week, uh, the energy becomes more conciliatory. It becomes more understanding. It becomes an energy of understanding genuine care and what care actually means for ourselves and for others. At the same time, at the very least, something that we can look forward to is that we're talking about these things. We're speaking more honestly from heart about our individual experiences and finding commonality in the process. So it is in the middle of the week, um, right around Tuesday and Wednesday respectively. That is when the sun will reach out and speak with Pluto before moving on to speak with Jupiter. This is a type of conversation that astrologers call a square. And this is tension, but it's also motivation. It's a desire for change now that can be there, but it can also be a sense of wanting and yearning and trying without necessarily feeling satisfaction or gratification. The energy of Pluto is an interesting one. Um, it is, of course, God of the underworld, what is happening beyond what it is necessarily that we're seeing on the surface. And then we have the sun. The sun is about what is happening, clear as day, right? Out in the open. And in the sign of Aries, there's a, a, an honesty to that energy. But with this energy now, there's also a sense of distrust of what may be happening underneath the surface as well on a more personal level, because that's always what I'm so much more interested in. As I was looking at the sky this week, I was reminded of an essay that I read so many years ago. It really was a life-changing experience to read this essay. And it is by Freud, and it is called On Mourning and Melancholia. So melancholia means depression. And essentially what Freud is saying here is that there is often the case when we see depression that what is really going on is that there is anger that the person feels, but the psyche is not ready to acknowledge the source of anger because the consequences would be too big. And so as a defense mechanism, instead that energy turns in on itself. It becomes melancholia, it becomes depression, it becomes self-loathing. Now, of course, I am just presenting his theory, right? His 
idea, which is just one of the many ideas that he had. And a lot of people have built on these ideas in different ways or, you know, developed nuances. And of course, I'm not talking about chemical imbalances or anything like that. But if we look at this from our perspective, right, and my current paradigm of a more spiritual perspective, when he talks about the psyche not being ready for it because the consequences would be too great, uh, we can have one example here. If you are angry at your boss, for example, if you were to truly acknowledge that um, and truly be in a space of knowing that whatever it is that is triggering your anger, maybe there are real issues there that you don't deserve. Well, then if you acknowledge that, then it becomes that much more uh, the case where you would have to change. You would have to figure out what action you need to take to not be in that situation. And of course, there's a variety of actions that can be taken from there. But that consequence can seem so big that sometimes the mind will not allow us to actually be in a space of being able to look at it. And I think that this great pause that we're in right now, as I'm calling it, the great pause. I think I uh, read an article that also described it as the great pause. We really are in this once in a lifetime moment. And it is in this moment now that it feels as if so much of the world, a huge percentage of the people on the planet are being asked to be still, are being asked to be in one space and to go within, it is as if our external world has had to calm down. The pace has changed dramatically in our external environment. And then we are left with ourselves and all of our feelings and all of the ways in which we have been on automatic, all of the ways in which we have accepted circumstances that if we allowed ourselves, if our psyche was really ready to, we would probably feel quite angry about. But instead, by being on automatic, by not thinking about it, by not sitting with our feelings and therefore sitting with our truth, we don't have to look at it. And so what can often happen is that people move through life with a certain malaise, a certain sense of ephemeral melancholia while never truly getting to the root of transforming it. Now I want to say that there are wise reasons for this, right? If the psyche isn't ready to look at the root and the true root of anger, that can be huge. According to Freud, for example, he believed and he posits that the root of our anger is essentially our parents. For whatever reason, our parents did us wrong, according to Freud. And on a level of our psyche, our parents are our first representatives of God. And so however it was that our parents were, whatever our relationship with our parents was, very often that is what we come to believe God is. And so imagine having to actually show or acknowledge anger at the parents is equivalent, at least on a level of the psyche, right? On a very deep part of us that we're not always conscious of. It is the equivalent of saying that we are angry at God and that is blasphemous. That is something that we're not prepared to do. And then what would happen to us? Then what would our lives be if we got to that place? So this is one example and, and this is sort of sharing my own exploration of Freudian theory but it can be that big it can be that consequential and so there are good reasons for us wanting to be on automatic wanting to be in a space or in a place of not necessarily having to really feel things deeply and now collectively with this great pause we just don't have a choice we are being asked to do just that and some people are having a really hard time with it well, where it is that there is frustration with the great pause, with being still, with being with oneself, that frustration is going to show up. There's going to be ideas of what should be and how things ought to be. That's the sun speaking with Jupiter there. 
but then also this acknowledgement, this deep seated sense of what is bubbling underneath the surface, bubbling deep within our psyche. What is coming out now? What is it that feels like a huge transformation to the point where we haven't even been able to acknowledge it to ourselves, but now in the silence and stillness that is forced on us, we have to look at it. Where is it that we are on a very deep level, frustrated with our lives, angry? Where is it that we have not been honoring a voice that is about what is going to return us to a childlike fulfillment, which is what the energy of Aries can represent? Well, the great thing with this week is that we do find answers. That is something I'm so excited about, so hopeful about. It is as we navigate late into the week, right around Friday is when the sun will speak with Ceres. Now Ceres is an asteroid and speaks to care and nourishment. Now there are all kinds of ways that we care and nourish ourselves. Nourishment is physical, of course but it is also psychological, it's spiritual, it's emotional. There is certainly food for the soul that we all need to consume if we are going to be okay. And with Ceres and the sign of Aquarius now, that has to do with being social. I shared in my newsletter uh, this week as I did a midweek check-in and I talked about the super moon and I talked about how much I've learned from my dog. I actually talked about that because some of the realizations I had was while I was walking my dog and this idea of how inherently we are social creatures. That's one of the many spiritual revelations he brings into my life. I'll tell you if you have a dog, you get it. If you don't, it's okay. But yeah, we are inherently social. We have an inherent desire to know others, to see ourselves and others. We know that we exist when we see ourselves represented. Nothing exists in a vacuum. Nothing comes out of nowhere. And however an independent or self-made or, you know, eccentric black sheep of the family, you may think of yourself chances are somewhere along the way, however early in your life, there was some example that was set for you that showed you that it was possible for you to go your own way, to be your own person, to find your own path. And I think that this idea of seeing ourselves and others, it is personal, certainly, but then now in our modern world, we have the collective experience of that also in terms of media figures, which is why representation in media matters so much to so many people. But yes, it is ultimately through others that we know who we are. It is a basic part of what it means to be human. And even those of us who have some strong introverted tendencies, like myself, I actually do have some of that, Still, it is a real sense of comfort that comes when we allow ourselves to connect. And when those connections are honest, when they are genuine, they are that much more soul nourishing. And I do really love the sun connecting with Ceres because it tells me that we are feeling that sense of nourishment. We're motivated to make those connections. The type of conversation that the sun and Ceres will be having is what astrologers call a sextile. And this is a connection of harmony, but it's not as harmonious as a trine, for example. So with a trine, the good stuff just shows up and we kind of think, yeah, this is how it is. This is how it should be. And trines can indicate laziness. Those are supremely harmonious energies. In the charts of successful people, we often see a whole lot of squares, a whole lot of tension because squares get things done. They motivate us to take action. That's the energy in the middle of the week. It may not feel easy, but it does motivate us to ask the questions, to take a step, any step to move us forward. But it is the sextile that, though it's not as easy breezy as the trine and not as 
uh, certainly not as filled with tension as the square. It's got just enough, just a little bit of tension there so that we're motivated to take action. We can see how if we take a step, things can improve. And as a result of the step we take or the steps that we take, we do see blessings and improvement transpire in our lives. And so in this way, sextiles are often thought to be more fortunate than trines because they represent a measure of control that we have over the blessings in our life. And so the blessing now is to feel truly nurtured deeply within for who you are, as you are, as an individual. To feel nurtured and supported in knowing your passions, knowing your truest self, that's the Aries sun. And in so doing, you uncover a deeper source of care within and from others as well. As we end the week, Mercury will speak in harmony with Venus. Now, Venus is in shadow at this point. I do have the Venus retrograde horoscopes for each sign up on uh, my website and in the superstar space, but I will have a proper overview available on YouTube at some point this week. So be on the lookout for that, where I talk about this energy for the collective. So I won't dive into it too much right now, but I will say that Venus Retrograde season is happening with Venus in the sign of Gemini. Gemini is online connections, it's communications. It makes sense that as we are opening ourselves up to love, especially in the online sphere, more than ever before, there would be that genuine desire to connect. And especially as isolated as we're feeling, there's even more desire to connect with others on various levels, levels of friendship certainly, but also romantic levels as well. And so it is now as Venus connects with Mercury and Mercury right now is in the sign of Aries as well. Well, there may very well be these moments of an adrenaline rush. There certainly is a certain flirtatious energy with us online late in the week and an energy that validates our individual expression. What I am really hopeful about with this energy is that with this Venus retrograde season, it's going to be a bit of a doozy, I have to say. And it is also going to feel a little bit like a Mercury retrograde as well, because Gemini is the sign that connects to Mercury. And especially in the month of May, we've got Venus holding a conversation throughout the month with, with Neptune for that matter. And that amplifies confusion that much more. So with all the confusion and uncertainty and even some energy of disappointment that may be there further on in this Venus retrograde season, I love that we have these moments, these moments of levity, of clarity, of fun and of insight. That is what is promised now. And it reminds us that even in the uncertainty, even in the confusion, there can be bursts of knowing, bursts of clarity, bursts of epiphany that open our heart. This is ultimately an opportunity to see and understand on a mind level the desires of our heart in a way that feels safe, in a way that allows that distance to occur. And a whole lot of us are going to be learning a lot of the lessons that only love and attraction and flirtation can provide, but we're doing so from a place of still staying focused on self. That is especially highlighted as we move late into the week. But yeah, this energy is flirty. It is fun. It is one of feeling the rush of excitement of what's new. And I think that is ultimately a very human experience. That sincere desire to feel heart and body and mind all working together. That sense of awakening that comes when we connect with someone whether we know them, whether we've been with them for a while, whether it is that they're brand new. This is ultimately new perspectives on ourselves that come through the blessing of interaction with other people. What I love about this week for us, well, look, I love the energy of 
transformation. Yes, as we're starting the week, we're building towards one of the more intense energies with the sun square Pluto, not the easiest energy in any circumstance, certainly an energy of frustration and wanting change, but not knowing how to go about it and feeling like there are these larger forces, feeling a sense of unfairness, but we've also got every reason for faith. Jupiter is squaring the sun as well. That may be overshooting the mark. That may be overconfidence. That may be heightened expectation. And yet, as we navigate later into the week, we get to the crux of the matter, right? We get to the root, the real lesson here, the real opportunity here, which is to know what we need, essentially, body, mind, and spirit. We come to a clarity as to what it means to be nourished, body, mind, and spirit. And in that clarity, in that knowing, we also tap into a depth of conviction that we deserve that. We deserve to have genuine care in our lives from others, but certainly from ourselves. We deserve to acknowledge what it is that we really need and to find ways to give it to ourselves because there's always ways to do that. There's something that happens there in that space of ownership and that space of self reverence. We're able to give that much more. We're able to love that much more. And with such social energy playing out this week with two planets in air, well, Venus is a planet in air. Ceres is an asteroid in air, but they're being activated now. All that air energy, it is very much about connecting with others and it is very much about knowing, being reminded that none of us is truly alone. And that is the greatest comfort of all. Well, thank you so much for watching. What do you love about this week? Let me know in the comments below. I love reading you guys and of course, if you want to know how all this wonderful stuff this week speaks to you and your sign, log on to NadiaShaw.com. Sign up to be one of my superstars. Superstars get expanded exclusive video scopes each and every week, unlimited access to special horoscopes and more. All of this in the superstar space. I look forward to meeting you there. As I mentioned earlier, Venus retrograde special horoscopes are now up in the superstar space. They should be up on my website as well, available for download at NadiaShaw.com. And I dive in for each and every sign. Uh, each video is between 15 and 20 minutes. I think one of the videos I went longer, but pretty much that's what you're gonna get, a 15 to 20 minute uh, video that explores what this Venus retrograde season is gonna mean for you as we navigate further and be on the lookout for the YouTube video coming up. I think I mentioned Saturn retrograde special horoscopes are already there as well on my website and in the superstar space. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your trust in my interpretation of the sky. It, uh, it really is such a privilege. Thank you. I have books. It's very exciting. Prayers to the sky. I just checked earlier today. It is still top five. I am so grateful. This book has been out for a month and it is in the top five of new releases on Amazon in New Age Astrology. So in its category, it is holding strong, still within the top five. Thank you. Thank you so much for resonating uh, with what it is that I have to share. Prayers to the Sky is available wherever books are sold and on Amazon as well. And The Body and the Cosmos, that was a number one new release when it came out as well. Um, and I hope that you love it. Thank you so much to everybody who's supporting uh, these books. Prayers to the Sky has a mythological exploration of the origin stories of each of the planets. Um, and that helps us to connect with the energy that much more. It has uh, prayers from ancient Greece and it has prayers that I wrote as well as we learn to connect with the energy, to work with the energy. It has a little bit of astrological magic in it. And so if you took those very popular classes from me on astrological magic, this also has some of that basic information uh, in here. And the body and the cosmos, well, this is me being a nerd, being the big nerd that I am, uh, taking the ideas of Plato that he uh, speaks of in his work Timaeus 
and applying it to an astrological sky. So that's me taking what I'm what I read about Plato, what I learned, about what he said, me diving into this text that I loved so much, which is about the origin of the universe and a mystical understanding of the cosmos that Plato presents, and actually me as an astrologer making those connections. And so you can find both these books online and wherever books are sold. My original book, Astrology Realized, still going strong. That's out there as well. And advanced copies for The Universe and Wa is Wise and Loving, Volume 1, The Nodes of the Moon. Um, if you have gotten the advanced copy, it comes with like $200, more than $200 worth of free gifts, including access to an online class that I'll be teaching on the changing of the nodes. That class is coming up in June. And so thank you. Thank you to everybody who got the advanced copy of the book. Um, shipment of this is going to go out at some point in May, in the second part of May. And then this book will be available online and wherever books are sold August 22nd of 2020. So thank you so much. Looking forward to sharing that with you as well events i've got lots and lots of online events happening it's all so very exciting synchronicity university is underway uh, earlier today we had our first class as part of the spring session and that was uh, on retrograde planets in astrology next week we are going to have introduction to numerology i'm so excited about that uh, as well sharing uh, that that i've used as part of my personal practice for a really long time but sharing it for the first time professionally i think is going to be so exciting and we've got lots of classes we have got mars in the astrology chart chiron in aspect venus uh, in aspect and of course our bonus q a class all of that is coming up over the course of the spring session at synchronicityuniversity.com. I've got other incredible events taking place. Be sure to join me next Sunday for a free online event with astrologyrisingcostarica.com. So Astrology Rise in Costa Rica is now gonna be a huge online one week party taking place in early May. We are doing a free webinar with some of the most brilliant astrologers alive today. I'm so excited about a free webinar is coming up next Sunday and I'm going to be there. Rick Levine, the great Rick Levine will be there. Maurice Fernandez, Christina Claudel, Julia Simas, Timothy Halloran, Ari Wolf, and of course Kai Pacha who is hosting the event. All incredibly gifted and brilliant astrologers all together and we will be talking about the different things that we'll be teaching and we'll be giving like little mini classes. I know I'll be teaching four classes as part of this week long event that includes a dance party and everything. So we're gonna have a lot of fun online. If you'd like to learn more about that event, go to the link. You can sign up for that free event as well. And I look forward to meeting you in this free webinar coming up next Sunday. And Norwak is now online as well. Again, brilliant astrologers uh, who are live today, truly world-class, noteworthy astrologers. We are all going to be teaching online now uh, as part of the Norwak conference taking place in the uh, second part of May. And so what's really great about this is that they are going to have several tracks going at the same time. So five classes are being taught simultaneously. So you can imagine how full this schedule is going to get, but you'll be able to have um, access to the replays for two full weeks after the conference is over. So you'll be sure to be able to watch everything uh, and to uh, feel as if you've really tapped into the best and all that this conference has to offer. So it is now going to be an online party. It's gonna be a lot of fun as well. Uh, and I'm teaching two classes as part of the Norwak conference. So you can find out more about that with links in the description below. My Astrology Toronto event has moved online. My Las Vegas Stargazers group has moved online. So I am gonna be in one place, like more or less, I'm gonna be in one place or two places because I have my parents house in uh in just outside toronto and uh my home here in cancun where i am right now so 
yeah, you're going to be able to see me wherever you are. You're going to be able to see me with all the different events I will be doing over April and May. So you can learn more about that on my website. Join me wherever you are in the world uh, for us to learn and to celebrate astrology together. I'm really looking forward to it. Finally, I am thrilled to celebrate with you my partnership with Cosmogram. You can now get automatic reports where I look at the different placements in your natal chart. You get to know exactly what I think about what sign your sun is in or any planet in your chart is in, what house it's in, how it's aspecting, what I think about those aspects. So it's a nice report that you get. Uh, it is emailed to you within hours of your purchase. Now this is in partnership with Cosmogram. Links are in the description below. A lot of people got this when it first launched a while back and it's gotten incredible feedback as well. Thank you. Thank you so much to everybody for your trust, for wanting my interpretation of your sky. And I hope that you continue to enjoy it for a very, very long time to come. It really was a dream of mine to uh, provide these reports and I'm so grateful that it did come together. I remember the very first computer generated reports that I got. Uh, was when I was a teenager, a while back, I'll tell you. And it was a gift from my aunt. And I uh, loved it. I poured over it. I was shocked that it was me on paper, is how I felt. And that really was the beginning of me getting serious about interpreting astrology charts. It was that important a moment for me. Uh, in addition to that, I still have that report. I have a box in my parents' house where I saved a very few small amount of documents and that computer generated report is one of the things that I saved. It meant that much to me and it continues to mean that much to me. And I hope that the report that you get from me based on my interpretation of your sky means a whole lot to you as well. Thank you. Thank you so much for this moment with you. Thank you for your trust and for sharing some part of your sacred journey with me, especially at this time of our collective journey, this time of the great pause that we will likely never see again in our lifetime. Yes, in one form or another, it is going to be stretched out in one form or another now and in the period ahead, but it is a once in a lifetime kind of opportunity where the world is standing still and with it we get to stand still and it is in the stillness that we will know whom it is we truly are and by learning that we will decide if that is whom we want to be self-knowledge self-awareness is power because it allows us to decide on our direction and I think that that can be a difficult process these can be hard questions but if we are willing to embrace it with some sense of curiosity well it can be that much more rewarding that much sooner and i wish you really well in this week of the great pause that we share together and thank you again it'll be a great week enjoy <laughs>